Hey guys, welcome back to Keto with Lee, your low carb lifestyle channel. I am your host, Sonia Lee, and today we are making guava and cheese pastries. These pastries are delicious. In Spanish, they are guava con queso, and they are very popular and very good, especially in the morning with some coffee. Well, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. That way you are alerted when I post a new recipe and when I go live and cook for my family as well. Please visit my website for full written recipes as well as the macros for those recipes. And that is www.ketoandlee.us. Now before we jump into this recipe, please support this channel I ask that you smash the heck out of that like button, you share with at least five people that you know, and if you're interested, you can get you some gear. I have an online store and I'll put the link in the description. Now, let me show you how I keto. We're gonna do our filling. This is gonna be four ounces of cream cheese for the original video. You're gonna be able to find the written recipe for this on my website at www.ketowithlee.us. So four ounces of the cream cheese. And then to it, we're gonna add our swerve. Give me a second. Sorry, my brain is just not functioning today. So in here is our swerve. Now what I want to tell you is if you don't have the powdered sugar substitute, you can put it in a blender or put it into a um, Ninja, a bullet. Um, I've used my Ninja for this and it pulverizes it for you if you have the granulated version. It saves you some money too. But you can use any sugar substitute that you prefer. I prefer the swerve, so this is the powdered swerve. And this measurement is two tablespoons, but remember that everyone's sweet tooth, I guess you can say, has, is just different. So if it's too sweet for you, just start with a tablespoon. When you blend it together, taste it. Just make sure that it's the powdered. Um, just, and why do we want the powdered version? Because we don't want it to be gritty. Okay guys, now vanilla. Now for the vanilla, it's gonna be two teaspoons. And in here, it's gonna be three teaspoons of the lemon juice. Some people like to put the lemon zest in there. Absolutely, it is an option. Now it's gonna get kinda loud in here. Forgive me one second here. Ah, let's see. All right, guys. So, I'm gonna lock it down, and we're gonna blend this on medium speed until it's kind of fluffy. So, for me, that's gonna be about a four or a six. Here we go. I'll show you what it looks like when we're done. what you want. Look at that. That is exactly what you want.
Now remember from my videos, I'm doing half of the recipe. You can find the written recipe at www.ketowitley.us. Oh, wait. Now, here we go. Christian's going to be my helper today. So you're going to see his hands up in the video. I'm going to melt that along with the powdered swerve. And this is two ounces. So Christian, go ahead and pour that in there. I like to melt the butter with the sugar substitute because that helps. Um, you can put that in this. Oh, it's not all off. Okay. All right, cool. So I like to melt them together. Why? Because it helps to alleviate that. Um, what do I always say? I always forget that word. That cooling effect from the baked goods that we do with sugar substitutes. So we're off to the microwave and we'll be right back. Okay, so now that our butter is melted, I am just gonna give it a good stir. Make sure all of the sugar substitute is in there and you know, it melts evenly in there, okay? So once this is done, we're gonna move on. To All right, so next we're gonna do our egg. And to the egg, I'm gonna add vanilla. Again, you can visit my website at www.ketowitly.us for the full recipe. I like to scramble it before adding everything else. Okay, so in here is our almond flour. Now, I'm getting a lot of questions in the comment section. Can I use coconut flour? Um, you can switch out any flour you want. Just keep in mind that I am using almond flour. I have not tried the coconut flour. For me, coconut flour tends to be a lot more dry. So when you make the pastries and stuff, it's gonna be a lot drier, so it, it like sucks out the moisture. What up? It sucks out the moisture to whatever you're making. So, I like to use a whisk to get the lumps out. So if Christian, you can get the lumps out for me. Let's like do that. Hold the bowl, please, so that nothing flies away. So basically, yeah, like that, but you could just stir it a little, just not too hard where it'll fly everywhere. Okay. So, the almond flour measurement is gonna be three cups of almond flour. Okay. That looks good. Now, this is baking powder, not baking soda. And in here, we're gonna use, for this recipe, one tablespoon of baking powder. Go ahead and pour that in there. Let me see, yep, you're good. Now, um, we're gonna stir that up real good. Yeah, Jaden. Give me one second, I'll get you your pencil. those little lumps out of there you can like yeah, make sure all the lumps are out and it's mixed very well it's a lump right there come on man don't play with these lumps okay so this is what it looks like guys all right so to this, we are gonna add our eggs. It's two eggs, scrambled, beaten, however you like to treat your eggs. <laughs> That's funny, right? <laughs> All right, and then to this, we are also gonna do, yeah, you're gonna mix it for me. This is the butter and um, sugar substitute mixture. So I'm gonna pour this right in, and then Christian's gonna stir it until it's well combined. You don't wanna stir it, like mix it so, so much. Okay. So go ahead and do that while I'm off to the sink. Oh, you know what? Let me get the whisk, because I don't think that's, yeah, I was afraid of that. So don't try this at home. Not the whisk. Like with the Here, fork? do it okay. with that. So 
I like to make sure that the bottom, sometimes it hides down there to the dry pieces. So now what we're gonna do is get our hands into it. All right. I'm gonna be using a half of a tablespoon. So if you've tried any of my recipes, let me know, you know, um, because it helps anyone else who's trying the recipes as well. All right, guys, so I'm gonna set this to the side. I'm gonna focus on the sheet here. So that's what I want. It's not totally heaping, you see that? It's a little heaping. I don't want a full tablespoon because I've made them with one tablespoon. They're kind of big, in my opinion. So basically, we're gonna roll them into a ball, okay? Then I'm gonna put it down and I'm gonna smash it. Now, I'm smashing it out into a disc. Because in here, this is where we're gonna put the guava and we're also gonna put the cream cheese, okay? So I don't know why I put it right there. We are gonna bake it on here. So I'm just gonna start putting them down. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is make them kind of like dumplings. We're gonna pinch them a little bit. So let's continue doing this. Oh, and leave at least two finger lengths apart just as we do with the cookies. So let's say right here. So when you roll them into balls, it actually helps with the, the shape of it, okay? Now you don't wanna go too thin um, because you are gonna lift them to close them up to bake them. So you just want them, you know, thin enough because these do um, puff up, believe it or not, they do. That baking powder absolutely helps with that. So now we're gonna move on. This is what they look like, guys. I'm gonna go ahead and poke them a little bit just because they puff out a lot and I wanna make sure that they cook evenly before I put the cream cheese and stuff. Now I have my guava. So I cut them into slithers and then I went ahead and cut it in half and then in a quarter. So these are quarters. Hopefully I have enough. Um, put as much or as less as you would like. I'm also gonna use this regular table, not tablespoon, a uh, teaspoon. Um, for the cream cheese, you can pipe it in there. I like to do it simple. So in this container, I have our cream cheese. Now, if it's too thick for you to handle, feel free to add about a tablespoon of um, heavy whipping cream. Um, that helps thin it out some so that it's easier to maneuver. Okay. So I'm just gonna go ahead, eh, sticky, put a piece of guava on each. that much left guys which is really good now we're gonna do the cream cheese so I'm gonna take now you can do as much of this or or less um, I like mine to be pretty creamy so so it's gonna at least try one or two yeah, I don't think that's enough though here Ooh, it's gonna be so good I'm using the spoon as a guide, a measuring guide. So 
So you don't have to put that much, but you do have the full eight ounces. Um, the macros that I gave you is for the full eight ounces. So if you don't know what macros are and you're new, um, macros are the, the nutritional facts. So the fat, you know, when you're on the low carb diets, we tend to focus on the fat, protein, and carbohydrates. That's how we measure, you know, how well we're doing on this low carb journey. So if you haven't tried guava yet, it is fairly sweet. So if you notice, I did not make, uh oh, I think that's too much for that one. Ah. Um, I did not make the dough too sweet. That is because um, the guava is, is very sweet. We've also sweetened the cream cheese. So you don't want it to be super crazy sweet and then you can't eat it. So this is the most challenging part of this recipe and it is to find out how I'll pick this up how you want to make these so you can do this and I think it's gonna be the best way let's try and close it up in there you know it's pliable so no worries make it like a little empanada okay that's one way they do, like I said, they're gonna, they're gonna grow out. So this one might have too much cream in there. All right, let me start here. That's why I'm wearing the gloves because it does get fairly sticky. Okay, okay. So spread it there. You know, it's so yummy when you get the cream cheese. That's why I put a little more in these. Um, so when you take a bite, it's not dry. It's yummy. But you don't have to put that much. So spread it out some. The guava's in there, it's on the bottom, I promise. You saw me put them on all of them. My oven is screaming at me. It is ready. All right, come on, cover up. All right, cool. That's all we gotta do, guys. So I'm gonna finish these off. Remember to go to my website for the full recipe. And then um, I will see you back when these are ready. Look, I put too much in that one. Let's put some more. Alright, so now <clears throat> we got those done, we are going to go ahead and do an egg wash on top. So this is one egg with a tablespoon of water, you could do one or two, just to water it down. Just going to brush them. Now the typical guava pastries, they have that coarse salt, uh, not salt, the coarse sugar on top. So you can do that with the, there is the granulated um, swerve, you can absolutely do that or at the end you could also do the powdered sugar so I might do that instead I'm digging this powdered sugar doesn't have a gritty taste so I made 11 and I still have all this dough left and this is only half of the recipe so you're gonna get plenty out of these oh and the cream cheese look there's just plenty left so all right now this is what it looks like, and we are off to the oven. This is what they look like. It looks darker on camera than what it actually is, but it is wonderful. See? So the pastry did puff up some. 
and you can see the cream cheese in there and there's the guava so it's not overpowering mm. very good mm. okay I like it mm -hmm. okay. It's not dry, it's moist with the cream cheese and it's not overpowering. The cream cheese is not overpowering, neither is the guava. But like I said, you can you can put more of any one of those things. 